Hello everyone, Crow here. Throughout the entire history of Overwatch, people have always been arguing about how each role is split into two between main and flex heroes. So let's end the confusion once and for all. You might be thinking, Crow, why in the world do you even need to know all of this? Isn't it obvious the roles are split into one tank, two DPS, and two supports? Well, let's consider the fact that there are 36 heroes in the roster. Actually, make that 37 with Life Weaver being added in Season 4. Now, let's do some math. First, there are 11 tanks to choose from. For the DPS, you have a combination of 2 out of 17 heroes with no repetition, which comes out to 137 different possibilities just for DPS. As for the supports, we have a combination of 2 out of 9 heroes with no repetition, creating 36 different combinations. Multiply them together, and guess what? We have a whopping total of 54,252 different compositions that can be played. So coming from a new player's perspective, it's virtually impossible to identify what team compositions are good and bad. But by using this role theory and splitting each of the roles into two, we can establish a general rule of thumb to avoid playing completely dysfunctional team comps in your games. Furthermore, most players realistically don't have the time to invest time into playing all of the soon-to-be 37 heroes of the roster. But you can use this role theory to figure out what your main role is, or if you want to flex, where to fill gaps in your hero pool. And finally, role theory will help you understand the idea and strategy behind Overwatch League teams and players. In fact, the entire origin of role theory and the distinctions within each role started from the pro scene in the first place. As in soccer or football for the non-American audience out there, you wouldn't make a talented striker practice playing goalie. Similarly, early on in the Overwatch pro scene, there was a need to distinguish a set of specializations within each role. And voila, that's how the role theory consisting of main and flex heroes came to be. Once you watch the rest of today's video, each player's most played heroes will finally start to make sense. So what in the world are main and flex roles? The community began grouping heroes based on specific characteristics and began using the main and flex as a term to distinguish within each role archetype. When this idea was put into practice, well, what do you know? The game suddenly started becoming more structured and began making a whole lot more sense even when we considered the 50,000 different combinations. Long story short, if you pick a team composition around the roles of tank, main DPS, flex, Flex CPS, Main Support, and Flex Support, your team is already halfway to success. Then, which heroes are main and which heroes are flex? If we divvy up the current hero roster, this is what that would look like. But of course, if there are rules, there always has to be exceptions, but we'll talk about that later. Let's start by talking about the two main differences between main and flex CPS. First is the weapon type. If the hero uses projectiles, they're classified to be closer to a flex DPS, and if it's a hitscan hero, they're considered to be closer to a main DPS. But this classification is closer to a tendency rather than an absolute rule. For example, heroes like Hanzo and Sojourn are played as main DPS because of their fast projectile speed. Even now and in the previous matters of Overwatch 2, we often see DPS pairs like Hanzo Mei and Sojourn Genji. The second is reliance on abilities. If the hero design is focused on high damage output through the main weapon, the hero is closer to a main DPS. But if the hero primarily provides utility or explosive damage through their abilities, they're closer to a flex DPS. In order to be classified as main or flex, the hero must meet both conditions, making heroes like Ash, Sojourn, Hanzo, Soldier, and Cassidy main DPS, while heroes like Genji, Torbjorn, Echo, Mei, Sombra, and Farah flex DPS. Tracer, Junkrat, Symmetra, Widow, Bastion, and Reaper are a little bit awkward to place in either category based on our classification. You might be wondering why in the world are there so many exceptions, but these heroes really just depend on the situation and can be utilized as either for a couple of reasons. First is Tracer. I mean, what more needs to be said? She's basically a must pick and can get value in every possible composition. She's basically your favorite condiment that can be put on any of your meals. Hot take, mayo is the best condiment. Next is Widow, Reaper, and Bastion. They're technically main DPS, but because they're so heavily specialized in what they do, it's not uncommon to pair them with other main DPS heroes. Likewise, Symmetra and Junkrat are technically flex DPS, but because their roles are also just as distinct, they're also often paired with with other flex CPS. In other words, excluding Tracer, the rest of the five heroes are more reliant on the enemy composition and map more than the ally DPS. When they show up in Overwatch League games, they're more of a strategic pick around the map or as a joker pick. The purpose of role theory is about building the
the ally composition, so let's take a look at the chart another time. The key idea for DPS is to pair one main DPS and one flex DPS to avoid doubling down. Double main DPS pairs like Soldier Cassidy or Ash Sojourn. Flex DPS pairs like Echo Sombra or Genji Torp are not optimal pairs for a team comp. Well, if you really want to get technical, there's nothing stopping you from doubling down on these heroes, but realistically speaking, doing so will make it noticeably more difficult to utilize properly. The table you're looking at now is the previous year's team composition data from the Overwatch League, filtered by Soldier. Even at a single glance, it's very easy to see that the pair DPS is overwhelmingly a flex DPS, and most of the data holds the same pattern for other heroes. We can see the same trend with the data for Ash, another main DPS, and in reverse, if we take a look at Genji's data, the pair DPS is either a main DPS or Tracer. But then you might ask, Crow, isn't this meaningless for the metal ranks? But I would actually argue role theory is even more important in the lower ranks. In these ranks, double main DPS is very common and it seems fine at first glance because teamfights tend to feel more stable with two main DPS. But really, this isn't stability and it's actually just a hidden source of frustration. Teams running double main DPS struggle to break through holds because they don't have a way to split the attention of the enemy team or don't have the utility to force an opening. This ends up being 4 minutes of the game where your DPS are getting contested from the same position and aren't able to contribute meaningfully to the fight, even if they're dishing out damage. There's a reason we don't see Overwatch League teams double down and we can see that the most played heroes of players tend to be built around the classifications in each role. Main DPS players in the Overwatch League play these heroes plus Tracer and Widow, while Flex CPS players play these heroes plus Tracer. Now, let's take a look at the support line. The difference between main and flex supports is how they heal. If the healing is automatic, the hero is closer to a main support, and if the healing is more reliant on aim, the hero is closer to a flex support. And through this classification, we have Lucio, Mercy, and Brig as main supports, while the rest of the support roster are flex supports, including the new hero, Lifeweaver. But unlike the DPS, the big red flag in the support composition is running a double main support pair. Mercy Brig, Lucio Mercy, and Lucio Brig compositions can be extremely difficult to execute and isn't advised, but in reverse, a double flex support composition is completely fair game. This wasn't always the case in Overwatch 1, but this is one of those dynamics that have changed about the game coming into Overwatch 2. Thanks to the support passive, allowing all supports to heal over time when not taking damage, a flex support combo has become a genuinely viable strategy, and like DPS, there are also some exceptions to note. Although Zenyatta is a flex support, he's no longer viable to pair with Lucio like in Overwatch 1. In fact, he's better paired with other flex supports than main supports in general. Role theory for supports is especially useful for analyzing support players in the Overwatch League. Sometimes we have hyper flex players who play both main and flex roles, which make them real commodities in the pro scene. Supports, DPS, and tanks alike. Of course, we can't explain every single team composition in the game using role theory, and things get a little bit more more complex once we start considering tempo, map, and play styles, but as a general rule of thumb, role theory does an amazing job at creating a baseline for building team compositions. We could also talk about the tanks being divided up into main tanks and off tanks, but maybe we'll discuss the differences in a future video. Hope this helped, and I'll see you guys in the next one.